YouTube crew, what is going on? And welcome back to another video. Now, today we have another episode of why my enemies don't shoot back. How do I drop 20 kills in a 1.14 average KD lobby and really avoid taking a lot of damage? You know, everybody's always so quick to say that their enemies shoot back. Let's talk about why my enemies don't shoot back. So as always, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribed down below. Let's go hashtag SBMM down in the comments below for the algorithm. Let's get into it. Okay, before we hit play here, because we jump into the action super quick, I just want to quickly remind you, this video is a little bit different than a traditional gameplay breakdown. I am looking specifically at how do I use my aim, my movement, my positioning, and I'm going to throw in a fourth today, my game strategy to ultimately avoid taking damage and get easy kills. So let's go ahead and drop in here. As I always say, floor loot, I'm looking for any gun off the rip, and then I'm going to start for trying to figure out what gun works best for me. Right here, I find an EM2, and I see that guy drop in, so I have to turn. I know he's going to challenge, and I immediately immediately hit shots there and then I use my audio to hear that guy both of those kills right there little bit of movement and being able to turn and track that guy but most importantly I hit all of my shots there I don't miss a single bullet on either of those guys and yes they have a pistol but that doesn't mean they can't down me in that situation especially because that first guy got decent damage on me that second guy could have easily taken me out if I don't hit those shots so Precision gets called in. We fast forward here. Now, I want to focus on positioning and aim here, right? So notice the positioning. I use these as cover, which makes it very difficult for my opponents to hit me, right? I always pay attention to my cover, but then watch how I get three kills here or three downs because, again, I do not miss a single shot here. First guy. Second guy. Now, granted, he doesn't have much health, but I hit it third guy up there all three of those people are down because i literally don't miss a shot now i get sniped from top prison is what it is i'm gonna go ahead and self-revive watch this smart play though see this guy right here this guy is not on my team or sorry not on the team that downed me from top prison so he has no idea i'm down unless he sees me but i don't want to notify him of the self-res so watch me wait i'm gonna let him get a little bit get a little bit now we go now i'm gonna take off i'm gonna get past him i'm gonna go close the door then start to shift down and then we'll go from there so just a little bit of an iq play right there things to keep in mind that you can use to your advantage now i did die once this game i fast forwarded past it i died because there were two guys camping in the corner i didn't have any plates anyway we get back in we got five kills we got 34 up very healthy lobby here rest of this game is super smooth i'm gonna use the snapshot to try to get a sense of where people are now i hear this guy right here again slide around the corner I basically use the door as my, my cover. I slide around the corner there so that I can kind of keep that element of surprise. Then I hit all my shots with the AK, which is really good. Right here, we're just going to team shot that guy. Super simple there in terms of we're all pretty close together. It's a pretty easy kill. I, but I take that guy either way. The AK is a great gun. Got a little bit of hip fire in there, but ultimately I'm able to hit those shots and, uh, and take that guy out. So still going. We don't have load yet, unfortunately. But I do have an AK and a Tech 9. It's viable. It's not the best. We're going to keep pushing across because Fresh is down. Then we're going to end up rotating down here. Uh, and we're still getting kills. I have 7 with 31 up. There's another one. I'm going to thirst this guy so I get the peek. I see one above me here. And these two guys are... are I'm assuming they're floating in. So uh, in this state of mind, I obviously know they're floating in. Now, hindsight being 20-20. But in the moment, I'm assuming they're floating in. So I'm going to go ahead and push this guy up top here. Be ready. I catch a quick glimpse of him right there. And watch how I peek this and kind of use this as my cover right here. I want to highlight this a lot today. Using this cover to my advantage. I'm going to use this as cover and then ultimately hit my shots for the easy down. The easy thirst. So now I see these two guys are floating in above. And all of a sudden the arrows switch. And I'm very confused. It almost cost and me below, here. Below, but below, watch how I corner. use aim to my advantage. And I torch this guy. He's broken right there. Now he tries to reach out. I just have too much of an advantage well, in that scenario. Because I already broke him. So that was a little bit weird in terms of how they dropped in uh, but we're able to use again our aim I think aim is such an important factor I talked about this on stream the other day which by the way if you are not following me on stream and want to catch some more high kill gameplay make sure you go drop a file there but we are education on there as well but I, I talked a lot about how Aim is so important compared to movement and positioning. You can have great movement, but you still have to hit your shots. You can have great positioning. You still have to hit your shots. Yes, movement and positioning can make up for bad aim if you get in a kind of a sticky situation. But ultimately, it comes down to can you hit your shots to down somebody? Now, I want to talk about this situation real quick. I drop everything. We buy UAV there because we don't have loadout, but we do have enough for a UAV. So let's get a quick peek at where people are. Understand what we're rotating into to get loady. I don't like pushing people without loading if I don't have to. So I know this guy's in tunnel. 
I have no reason to push him. I'm going to go grab Lodi and then I'll push him. Then I have such an advantage. I have a heartbeat. I have my own loadout guns. Like there's no reason for me to go push this guy. My teammates ultimately did. Dayton goes down, which is fine. That's a decision that he made. I'm going to go grab Lodi. I have no reason to go push that without Lodi, especially when it's here and we're it's open. Now I see two teams right here, right? Let's talk a little bit of game strategy here. I see a team right here and a team behind. Really weird situation. You're gonna see how cautiously I play this. Yes, caution may cost me a 40 bomb or a 50 kill game or whatever it may be, but ultimately it's my recipe for consistently dropping, you know, 10, 15, 20 kills in this game, 20 plus or 20. So I get that down there. Now I'm worried about this team right here. Now this is the guy that's catching my attention. He is way out in the open right now. He's by himself, right? He is separated from his three teammates over here. So I want him. He is the easy kill that I want. That's what I'm looking for, easy kills. Now he's with his teammates. Now they're two stacked, right? They're two stacked, but they're close by. If you were to go try to challenge this and down one, maybe two, you get rushed by the other two players. I think that's a huge trap that a lot of you fall into that we can work on being better about, looking for easy kills. It's not always the easiest. It's something you have to get used to, but this is a team now I no longer want to push. They're four stacked. That's a very difficult push in terms of having to constantly reposition. And look how four stacked they are right here. They are literally right on top of each other. So let's go ahead and focus on this team again over here. I can go get my thirst that of the guy that I downed because he still hasn't been confirmed. By the way, we have 10 kills right now with 28 up. And you see how easy the 10 kills were. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, you know, I haven't really taken a whole lot of damage. This is a bad p push right here. I push in. I see that guy there, and I try to use this as cover. Ultimately, a bad push, but watch how I play this. I come back out. I peek. I use this box as my cover. Right there, I catch a quick glimpse of him. I don't know if you saw him. Let me pull back real quick. I'm going to pull back out of here. I'm going to, again, use the crate as my cover, and you catch a quick glimpse of him jumping out right here. It's hard to see, but he's right there. Watch how I use my movement and my aim here. I'm going to use my movement to crouch below the crate. I'm going to throw him off, and then I'm going to re-challenge, hit all of my shots. Even though I'm low plates, I win this fight because of those two things combined. Crouch down, switch guns, hit all my shots, re -chow, dead. Easy kill right there. I don't take a lot of damage after that initial kind of situation I put myself in, which I was pushing a little bit blind, not knowing where he was. But ultimately, we end up okay. So I got a guy in here. He ends up shooting at my teammates. I was rotating over to buy to buy a UAV. Another thing that we can talk about, just keeping UAVs up. That's an easy kill because of aim right there. The more you can keep UAVs up, the easier this game gets. You understand who to push. You understand how to push them. You understand where they're rotating to. Then it's about our execution. It's about using our movement to our advantage, using our aim, and then, you know, putting yourself in good positions, which I do want to talk about here. Again, we got another four stack, you know, four guys very close together, tough team push here. I'm just trying to play a little patient. I'm trying to make them make a move, especially since they're on the edge of gas here. You know, you don't always have to go, 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 go. Sometimes you can play a little bit more cautious. Again, it goes back to what I said. I play strategic aggressiveness. I want to play aggressive. I want to get high kills. I want to put I want to play strategically, though. I don't want to put myself in bad situations. So as I'm approaching this, I'm a, I'm trying to see what these guys are going to do. Where are they going to push to? What is their play out of this situation, out of this building? So I'm just going to I'm going to give it one more ping. Now look how separated they are, right? So there, I know there's one guy over here somewhere, but these two guys are together. Okay, now let's push. I'm going to go push. I'm going to anticipate. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to hit all my shots, right? Now I catch a quick glimpse of the second guy. This, again, is why I love combat scout perk. Yes, it's a huge advantage. And as you saw or as you'll see, like Amped has, hasn't really cost me ever before. So I'm going to go ahead and reposition now, use my movement, use my aim, and you'll hear this guy say that I just outplayed him. I just outplayed him. That I did, my friend. Like, that's just he a simple just reposition there, and then I hit my right. shots. He didn't really have anywhere to go. I had the advantage, and I have the advantage there because I get that first easy kill. I need you to understand, if that first guy breaks me, now I have no advantage. Now I'm in a really bad spot because now I got to plate up and reposition at the same time. Still worry about the res and that second guy pushing me. But because I anticipate that guy, because I hit all my shots, that second kill becomes easy. Because I still have the advantage. Again, it's now we're we're still equal, except I already took one guy out of that fight. So that's how you take on a 1v2 in that kind of scenario. So Tommy's down here. He gets a great live ping. I get the easy down here. That's just kind of a, a gimme kill right there uh, in terms of getting him down. And we're going to keep kind of pushing here. 15 kills, 12 up. Want to highlight that. This end game gets good, by the way. As I said, these this is a sweaty lobby. 1.14 KD. A lot of great players in here. I keep calming. I almost take control of this. You know, who on your team is your leader? Who on your team is 
calling out the comms. I keep saying, we need UAVs up. We need UAVs up. Catch that guy. Tag him. Break him. Huge advantage now. I'm going to go reposition, right? But ultimately, what has to happen is they got to play it up and figure out what they're doing, especially because they're pushing into gas. So now I catch this guy. I do miss a few shots, but I have good positioning here, right? That's really good positioning compared to where he is. I'm in gas. I have cover. I have high ground. I am waiting for him to rotate. He rotates. Then I just have to hit my shots enough to get him down and thirsted. I got two guys be below me. Let's go ahead and push over there. We're going to keep pushing here. This is the pace aspect. Now, this one really threw me off here because this guy's below me. This guy's below me, right? So it's very obvious where he is. This guy's on the same level as me. So I was very confused about where he was, which is why I played this a little bit more cautious. Because what I don't want to happen is, and let's learn from this, what I don't want to happen is this guy to be on this level. I go challenge this guy below, and what happens is this guy now has high ground and an angle on that corner where I'm going to be stuck. So that's why, that's why I hesitate for a second here. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. What you're going to see is how I use my movement. In this scenario coming up, I want you to pay attention to two things, and then I'm just going to let it play. First kill I get from the guy below me. I'm going to challenge the guy below me first. I'm in a bad spot, bad positioning. I'm caught on the railing. I'm caught out in the open. But because I use my movement and I reposition, I ultimately decide to full challenge him. Then I hip fire a little bit. Then I use my aim to my advantage and ultimately get this kill. So right here in a bad spot. But because I challenge, right, I go and I say, I'm going to challenge this guy. I fly down. I basically force him to track me, right? A lot of people are probably like, Joe, all you did was fall off the railing. But think of it the other way. I am forcing my opponent to track me. If I turn and just shoot at him, all he has to do is shoot back. He already has the advantage. Instead, I'm going to make him track me. While I have now hip-fired, I've centered on him. I've hip-fired at ADS. That's ultimately why I get that kill there. Now, this guy ended up just playing around the side here, giving him a little flank. Uh, he's actually plating up in this corner. I think he took a little bit of gas damage. Just quick heartbeat check to make sure. Now, I'm just going to go over and play, uh, go over and chow this. Easy kill there. So we got 18, we got 12 people up. We got a good game going at this point. I, as I said, pretty decent lobby. So we do want to keep UAVs up. So my thought right now, I have one above me. I heard enemy floating in, so I know he's flying in. I don't really think he's, uh, I'm not fearing the roof too much. But I'm going to go ahead and play this left side. I'm going to play this left side because I ultimately want to get to this buy station. Why do I want to get to the buy station? Because I want to keep UAVs up. I want to keep UAVs up as much as possible. I promise you this, be this game becomes so much easier if you focus on your cash flow and keep UAVs up. I don't, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it until I'm blue in the face every single video. If you can keep UAVs up, you will learn how to execute. But you cannot execution in terms of aim, movement, positioning, repositioning, and game strategy, those kind of big things become much tougher when you have no idea what you're doing, when you have no idea where you're going, when you have no idea where you're pushing. So I, that's why I rotate left. I get a UAV up. I see this guy in here. Now let's pay attention to the movement here. I play so quick, right? I'm so committed to challenging this. He's going to he's gonna crossbow me here, but he's only going to break me. He doesn't direct impact me because watch how I, I commit to this and I jump peek this corner. Watch how far away from the door I am by the time I challenge him, by the time that crossbow hits. Right? I'm through the door. Look, that crossbow just hit right there. Look where I am. He is just taking damage right here. Now, he has a crossbow, so he's got to reload and everything. I my, Look at my health. My health is low right here. But because I jumped so far. Now, Day, look, let's get one thing clear. Dayton's right there to back me up. So if I, if I were to go down here, Dayton would clean that up. It'd be perfectly fine. But I take damage, but I don't go down from a crossbow, which should put me down. Because I commit I jump peeked that corner, and now I just hit my shots, and he's dead. Now, at this point, got to give a huge shout-out to X-Fresh here. Uh, I calmed. I need one of these last two to drop the 20. He took the guy in the back. I'm going to take this guy right here. Now, we did kind of full send this without cover, so I get a little caught. But I just give a little quick peek back, a little quick peek again. And ultimately, there's 20 kills. So I hope you learned something today. At the end of the day, what I want you to really focus on, how you can use aim, movement, positioning, and game strategy to Get easier kills and keep those UABs up. Focus on easier kills. And all of a sudden, you start dropping higher kill games. Those 20 kills that I got weren't that sweaty. And it's because I'm not pushing four stack teams, three stack teams. But start to push the easy ones. Get the easy ones. Execute. And you're going to start dropping higher kill games. I promise you. Hope you found today's video helpful. Let's get better today. And I will see you tomorrow.